Hi NPFL, Bass Pro Gary Atkins here with your weekly TRS Tackle Tip of the Week. This week I want to talk about the proper maintenance of rods and reels. I feel it's something that really gets overlooked by most anglers, but me as a pro angler, I know the importance of it, so I try to stay on top of it. So today I'm going to talk about the proper cleaning and greasing and oiling of a reel, and then I'll get into the proper rod maintenance. So this, this particular reel right here, it's a bait caster. It came off my frog rod. It's spooled with braided line. And as we all know, braided line is very coarse. So it brings in a lot of stuff out of the water through your guides, your rods, into your spool. And over the course of the summer, it will build up all underneath, in and around the spool, through the line guide. So I like to keep it clean. At the end of the year, I bring all my rods and reels in. I take them apart. I start cleaning them, greasing them, and oiling them. So I'm going to show you what I typically do. I will take a Q-tip, I will dip it in some soapy water, and then I'll flip the reel over and I'll just start cleaning. And the reason why I use a Q-tip, it just allows me to get in them little tight areas where I can't get my fingers, I can't get a rag in there. So a Q-tip allows me just to access parts of the reel that I normally can't get to. I'll get in and around the thumb bar, in and around the line guide, because there, there a lot of crud seems to build up around that. And just kind of go through it real quick, loosen up all that stuff, get it clean. It only takes a few minutes to clean it. And I'm not going to get into cleaning this whole reel, but I just want you to see something right here. This was a new Q-tip. The one side is completely white, and I just cleaned that little bit, and you can see how black it is already. So that's how much dirt has built up over the course of a summer. So that's why it's very important to make sure you're cleaning your reel annually. Now, as far as the greasing and oiling, there's really only a couple of areas that you really need to maintain. And the thumb bars or excuse me, the, the thumb spools for your, for, your, for your handles. Make sure they're spinning good. Make sure they're spinning freely. This one's not too bad, but I'm still going to put a drop of oil on each one just because I, I know I haven't done it since last winter. So there's a hole right here and right here. I could take a screwdriver and pull that off, but there is that little hole there. So I'm not going to take the time to do that. I'm just going to put one drop of oil right there, one drop of oil on this one, and then I'm going to spin them and work that oil in them bearings. And these are really quiet. These are actually really good. And this reel is six years old, and it's still as good as the day I bought it because I do maintain it. Twirl around. Now as, now, as far as the greasing part of it, most manufacturers give you a port to put grease in through. Um, a lot of them I've seen will have a little little screw right here that you can pull out and it'll expose the gear and then you can put grease in there and spin it put grease in there and spin it this particular reel it's got two screws one right here and one right here if I take them two screws out this section of the reel will pop off it's just a little square and it'll expose that gear I'm not going to get into that today because I don't want to take too much time doing this um, but but as soon as this video is over I will get into this reel and grease it really well but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take Grease, grease like this. I'm going to put it all over that gear. I'm going to spin it. I'm going to fill it with grease again. I'm going to spin it. And I'm going to do that three or four times until I'm satisfied that them gears have enough lubrication and I'm going to be able to get through a number, another summer with it. So that's pretty much it for the reel. I always want to make sure that my drag is backed off for the winter. I don't want to keep it tight because my frog rod, and normally I've got that thing as tight as it'll go because I'm yanking them out of heavy cover and I've got 50 pound braid and I gotta worry about them snapping me off. But I want to I want to back that off as much as I possibly can. That way that reel's ready to go for spring. Now as far as my rod, I want to make sure that none of my rod guides are bent, none of them are cracked, the ceramic, none of them are chipped. So the thing about a rod is it sits on your deck of your boat or it's jammed in the rod locker. Um, you're setting the hook and you're hitting your windshield, the head of your trolling motor, 
possibly your power pull if you're in the back. So the rod takes a lot of abuse. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that none of my ceramic guides have got a crack or chip in them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a cotton ball. And the reason why I use a cotton ball is because it's, it's, it's really loose fiber. And if there's a crack in that guy, uh, ceramic, it's gonna, I'm going to feel it, and that, that's going to hang up in it. And when I pull it away, there'll be fiber hanging in it. That, that's going to bring that to my attention. That one's good. That one's good. And also, you don't want to use anything too coarse, because you really don't want to scratch the ceramic either. And I ain't got to worry about that with a cotton ball. Another thing you never want to do as an angler is every rod supplies a, a hook hook clip. I, I've seen anglers where they're taking their baits and they're actually putting their hook through their guide. Never want to do that. Hooks are razor sharp. All it takes is one little scratch of that ceramic and um, now you've got an eye that's no good and a chance that that line could break when it hangs on that scratch. So I'm going to run through all these eyes and make sure none of them are cracked or chipped. They all feel good. You especially want to check the tip one because that's the one that the line rubs on the most. This rod is good. Like I said, check down the eyes. Make sure none of them are bent to one side for being stepped on. And this rod's ready to go. As far as the real seat, I'll lift this, unscrew this all the way up. Uh, again, I'll take a Q-tip, a little bit of soapy water. I'll clean all this out because that seems to get a lot of dirt on it also. Not real important, but it's just something I do. If I'm going to go through the trouble of cleaning everything, I might as well clean everything. And that's good. Now this rod's ready to go. I'm confident that no chips in the glass of the eyes, and I ain't got to worry about losing a big, big fish. Because as a tournament angler, the last thing you want to do is lose a big fish. And again, I always keep my rods in rod socks to protect them when they're in my rod locker or if they're in my truck and I'm going somewhere, I keep them protected with rod socks. Then I have just a little bit more confidence that that rod's not going to get damaged in travel or bouncing around in the rod locker. I hope that tip helps you um, from losing fish and allowing you to keep your reels and rods for a lot longer periods of time. We pay a lot of money for our equipment. Like I said, this reel is six years old. It's as good as the day I bought it because I maintain it every year. Now, as far as the rod socks and the lubricants, all that stuff can be purchased at the reel shot using promo code GARY10. You can save 10% on all your tackle and apparel in the store for all online purchases. I say take advantage of it. It's, I'm going to be here every week um, with a promo code, so please follow along and use them promo codes, save you some money. Until next week, I hope to see you on the water.